What's happening everybody and welcome to the Royal Kennels YouTube channel. In this video guys, we are going to talk about can you breed that pocket dog to the standard dog? It seems to be a hot topic. I get the question a lot. I guarantee you don't want to miss this breakdown. Just like I said, we are going to talk about can you breed that pocket dog to the standard dog. And you know, it's crazy because a lot of people who are breeding these American bullies, they don't know the difference between a standard and a classic. Yes, the standard male is 17 inches, but... If it doesn't have those exaggerated features like a true standard should have, then it's not a standard. It's only a classic. It's got to have the exaggerated features. So what I'll do is I'm going to give you guys um, a nice photo of a standard American bully. And I'm going to give you guys an example of the classic. American bully and you can see it's a difference and you know I use the reference as not only height But I go to weight as well if you have a 17 inch dog 90 to 100 pounds you got you a nice standard if it's you know intact According to the standard and your classics are gonna be a little lighter you might have an 18 19 inch dog and you around 90, 80 to 90 pounds, that's a more slender built. It's a more agile dog. It's a more athletic dog. Yes, we say the standard American bully should be a working dog. Yeah, we know that. But we know at 17 inches tall and 100 pounds, you ain't doing too much work. So I'm going to give you a few examples that if you do do the breedings, what you can look for and how you can make it happen all right so a standard a standard female 16 inches um 16 inches tall and 70 pounds all right you can take that standard female at 16 inches and breed her to a pocket at 15 all right a pocket male at 15 inches all right, but you're not going to take a 17 inch standard female and breed her to a pocket at 15 inches because the gap is too big and you're putting your breeding at high risk to um, genetically bring two dogs together that's totally built different and then you know what you see then you see more weight on a dog you see a higher rear you know, have you ever seen those dogs with those weak pasterns? You know, you feel like you got too much weight on the dog to where it can't properly hold that weight. And then they look flat footed. Although we know that's a genetic thing, but it's a genetic thing because it's a consistently put inside that gene pool. So, you know, but what, what originally caused it is the frame, the bone is not strong enough to handle the exaggerated weight that you genetically through generations have put inside these dogs so you have a 17 inch standard male and you breed it to a 15 inch pocket female 
you can get away with that because we all know that the female carries about 70% of the look, not 70, not 70 percent of genetics, because we know that um, the genotype is 50-50. But the phenotype, the characteristics and the look, it takes after the mom more. So you can get away with it. But if you bring that standard female to your pocket male, you're going to have probably 70% standard dogs from the female and maybe 30% pocket. And in those pockets, you're going to look at, you know, you're going to look at maybe risking getting some high rears in there. So overall, I would say don't start in the negative. Breed a pocket to a pocket and a standard to a standard. But if you purchase a dog as a pocket and you know what things happen, it might grow up to be 16 inches tall, 70 pounds, you're still all right to take it to a 15 inch pocket that's 80 pounds. And, and you'll, you'll do good. You'll have borderline pocket standard dogs. And a lot of times you might have a female that's 16 inches and you bring her to a show and she's represented as a pocket because that's what class she fits in best based off of her presentation. So to answer your question, you can breed a standard to a pocket. Just make sure you do it properly and you're not, uh, and you're not breeding dogs that are two and three inches different. Make sure it's close. And if it's not close, man, if I can give you any advice, don't do the breeding at all and start over. Because listen, it takes a lot longer to start in the negative than just counting your losses from the beginning, starting fresh and breeding right. You know, and just like I always say, you know, you're going to do what you want to do regardless, but it's my job to make sure that you do this properly or to make sure I at least give you the game so you make the right decisions in your breedings. So that's what we're here for. That's my breakdown, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you. I hope it's answered that question. Have a great day, and God bless y'all.